So freedom in Christ is not legalism, but it's not license either. True freedom is found in the spirit-led life where we use our freedom to serve and love God and others. If our language of symbols isn't helping, perhaps this one might explain things better. C.S. Lewis wrote, The devil always sends errors into the world in pairs, pairs of opposites, and he always encourages us to spend a lot of time thinking which is the worse. You see why, of course. He relies on your extra dislike of one error to draw you gradually into the opposite one. But do not let us be fooled. We have to keep our eyes on the goal and go straight through between both errors. We have no other concern than that with either of them. Legalism and license are an erroneous pair of opposites, and the truth of what C.S. Lewis is saying has been evident throughout our study. Let's take a moment to look back over the series. First we saw how Israel abandoned the law of Moses and slipped into do-what-you-want license, and we saw how the nation ended up in ruins because of it. We then learned that the Pharisees tried to cure the problem of license in the land by putting everyone under strict legalism, and in doing so, simply created a nation of cold, hard-hearted hypocrites. When the apostles then told the people about the gospel of freedom in Christ, we saw how the Judaizers snuck around after them, trying to pervert the message and drag people back into legalism, especially in Galatia. In response to that, the Gentile converts pulled too hard in the other direction and claimed that freedom from the law meant freedom to sin. We also explored how, in more recent times, young Christians who grow up under suffocating churchy legalism tend to make a run for worldly license as soon as they can, getting involved in wild parties, sexual immorality and sinful living. We've also examined how many churchgoers claim freedom from legalism means freedom to do whatever we want because it's all going to go in Jesus' limitless credit card and it's once saved, always saved. We've seen how this has created a licentious church from around the mid-20th century right through until today. In reaction to this, I've seen many cults and quasi-Christian groups recently trying to resurrect the law of Moses, groups like the Hebrew Roots Movement or the Sacred Name Movement, for example. These are movements effectively trying to re-Judaize the Christian faith. I believe they're doing it partly in reaction to the licentiousness of Christians who behave no differently to the world around them. Like the Pharisees, they think the answer to license must be to make stricter rules, to go back under the law. Now through all these examples we've seen how true freedom can so often elude us and how we can instead ping pong back and forth between the two opposing errors. In our bid to escape legalism, we often end up sliding into license, and in our bid to put an end to license, we often end up enslaved by legalism. In the meantime, people from both sides of the divide spend hours arguing with one another about who is right and entrenching themselves deeper into their own pit. To be honest, Satan doesn't mind which of the two pits you fall into because both are a type of bondage. Neither will cause you to live the kind of spirit-filled life that really threatens his kingdom. And indeed, he pretty much has the whole world in bondage to one of these two pits. The godless people of the world, the atheists and the New Agers, without a reference point for their moral compass, tend to be enslaved by license. They're out ruining their bodies, souls and spirits with alcohol, drugs, promiscuous sex, occultism, violence and whatever else their heart desires under a do-what-you-want banner. On the other hand, those involved in false religion are enslaved by legalism as they hopelessly try to work their way to heaven by their own efforts and in doing so give worship to demonic idols. The only true freedom is the spirit-filled life in Christ. So we've probably grasped it by now, but here's a final rundown of the differences between legalism, liberty and license. In giving, legalism says you must tithe a set percentage of your income to be right with God. True freedom says you don't have to give, but love of God and others will compel you to selflessly give authentically, spontaneously and extravagantly. License says that since you don't have to tithe, be selfish and don't give anything at all. In fasting, legalism says you must fast at set times to be right with God. True freedom says you don't have to fast, but love of God and others will compel you to selflessly fast authentically, spontaneously and extravagantly. License says that since you don't have to fast, be selfish and don't fast at all. And in prayer, legalism says you must pray five times a day to be right with God. 
True freedom says you don't have to pray, but love of God and others will compel you to selflessly pray authentically, spontaneously and extravagantly. License says that since you don't have to pray, be selfish and don't pray at all. At least until you find yourself in a tight bind and desperately need God to do something for you.